The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Speaker, there are times when you wait in this debate for an enlightened contribution, and unfortunately, that was not one of them. <laughs> Did we hear about the per capita GDP of Finland? Oh, no, I can't mention those facts. Or the total GDP comparity of Finland? No comment about that. Or the take-home pay of the Finnish people compared to New Zealand? No, I can't mention that because that's a comparison that they can't even stand up against. But, Mr Speaker, our government has a manual, a cabinet manual. Clearly, Merrill Lynch never did. And all over New Zealand, there was a huge sigh from local government at 2 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Mr Speaker, there was a massive sigh of, from local government all around this country. But if the Prime Minister, Nick Smith, think that they've dodged the bullets over the ACC dispute or debate, then we've got news for them and it's all bad because we want to know the facts behind this. We remember John Key's quotes, I expect high standards from my ministers, in a quote. Now, you know, if those are high standards, then you could parachute them out the backside of a, of a rabbit. That's what you could do with them. I expect high standards. That was his boast. If any member of parliament from another party had written as a minister a letter on a ministerial letterhead like this, the National Party would be screaming for blood. But there they sit, all mute, in the back bench, hoping, well, Nick's gone, maybe they will put me there. <laughs> maybe they'll put me there. You can see the egregious self-centred concern they have, not for Nick. They remind me of the high belt in Africa, where, you know, there's a whole lot of animals grazing there, and out of the long grass comes this lion. And they all run like nobody's business to get out of the way, but as soon as the lion gets the first one, they all stop and start grazing. That's the National Party. That's the National Party. They, they emulate, resemble nature. Prime Minister, Mr Key, knew about this case. My question is, when did he know and how much did he know? That's where this issue is going now. And he can think he can hide behind the second letter pulled out from 2010 as being the second unforgivable sin. Not the other one that just last year, but the unforgivable one was the one in 2010, which we didn't know about. We want to see all the emails, all the texts between Ms. Puller and Nick Smith. Well, there may be photographs. I'm not pushing it too far. Because we're going from what we know and we're not going to speculate on what we don't know. But let me make it very, very clear. What did he do about it when he knew the Prime Minister? He knew, for example, that Ms Puller was putting pressure on Nick Smith. What did he do about it? Well, apparently, nothing. Did he advise Nick Smith as to what should be done? Did he advise any of his other colleagues? He knew what was going on. Take former party president Michelle Bogue. Why was she involved? Why was this woman involved? Someone who got lined up at court for trying to pervert the course of justice, do you remember, in a massive commission of inquiry, and got fined for it. Nothing, no problem with the National Party. Talk about standards. They haven't got any. They haven't got any. Today we learned about the second lesson, the second error of the letter 2010. You know something? This is not going to be the Ponzi, Pansy Wong situation where she jumps ship and says, look, I'm resigning, I'm coming home, Sammy. Oh, no. We know that there's a lot behind the Pansy Wong story which goes all the way to a former National Party Prime Minister. And they know as well. The problem with this parliament is they didn't press on, and they should have. In this case, we are. We are going to find out what they knew, when they knew, and what they didn't do about it when they should have acted. Why didn't the Prime Minister instruct his minister to tell Ms Puller to go and get help somewhere else? Why didn't he do that? The issue is not a case for the Privacy Commissioner. Pardon? Because he thought he could slide by and none of us would know. But unfortunately, this is a small country. And the National Party now finding out again what they should have acted on when they first knew. It's not a case for the Privacy Commission anymore. This goes to 
the quality and transparency of government. Tim McIndoe. Mr. Speaker, I think 